played around with a bit of grafting this last winter. Um, of course, grafting being a really good way of multiplying your fruit trees in terms of, you know, fruit varieties without having to go out and spend a huge amount of money on, uh, you know, specific varieties because they're expensive. You know, fruit trees, you can easily spend 40, 50 pounds on, you know, per fruit tree if you want a decent one. We tend to get cheaper ones than that, but, you know, you can spend a lot of money. Another way to go is to just buy scion wood. Now, for them, you need rootstocks and so on. Uh, we haven't really got any pear trees that are big enough to be able to graft to yet. We've got a load of um, common pear, Paris communists, been planted into the shelter belts that eventually we'll be able to graft to to pear varieties that we want. And we got a few pears up in the food forests, but <laughs> I wanted more pears than we actually had the budget for. So this winter we did a little bit of experiment and it's worked. Have a look at this. Now this little tiny little fella here is a black Worcester pear. It's a very, very interesting pear. It's a very long keeping pear. It's very tough. And uh, ever since I read about it, I wanted one. So couldn't afford one. So we got a little bit of cyan wood and we grafted. So there's one that's taken there. And there's another one that seems to have taken here. You can see that's really nice. And in comparison, you can see there's one that didn't take right next door. So I'm very, very pleased with that. But what's weirdest of all, what's most impressive of all, is it's not a pear tree that's been grafted to. That's a hawthorn. <laughs> this is a trick you can do with meddler as well. You can graft meddler to hawthorn. But this is, I mean, <laughs> that this actually works. It doesn't work with every type of pear, apparently. Um, here I've tried with a conference. It's possible the cyan wood wasn't the best. It came from a very, very cheap supermarket pear tree. But uh, it's possible that just conference doesn't work with this. But <laughs> the Black Worcester does. Very, very, very pleased with that. Because, I mean, you can see just how many we've got just down the lane here. We also have loads more in the shelter belts um, and a load more that we've planted as well. Some of the oldest trees on the croft are the actual hawthorns here. So it does mean that as we come through and we start top working these, um, we can graft to them with, you know, usable, um, you know, useful medler, uh, pay and meddler. And we've got meddler on site. Uh, we have one of those trees. So once it comes to the point that we can start pruning that, we can start using uh, that material of cyan wood for grafting onto, you know, more of these and see if the one we've got works as well. And of course we can do more with other types of pear, but also this means we have this variety on site now, even though I haven't actually got this on a pear tree itself. I don't own this pear tree. Um, I do own this branch of a pear tree. So that as further down, you know, further down the road, when we get the, um, the wild pear, they start to come up really aggressively. We got, I don't know, 40, 50 of them. It means that I can take material from this when necessary. And I can, you know, graft that to it. It's a very, very cool trick. So why might you want to do this yourself? Well, first off, it might be the same situation as us where you haven't got, um, you know, a lot of pear trees or um, you've only got a hedgerow or whatever. Until your pears get up and become established that you can start grafting to them. It's a way of, you know, parking that variety there as well as it's just a fun thing to do. We'll come to that again later. Secondly, it means that we can keep a less palatable species lower down like hawthorn that's you know spiky and things don't necessarily like to graze um while up on high we can have you know two or three types of pear we can have meddler and we can have something that really is you know quite interesting you can always get um better varieties of hawthorn as well these are you know the native variety the local they're not great tasting you know people reckon you can you know smash the fruit and extract the pulp and stuff i've tried it a few times it really doesn't taste good uh, but some varieties apparently are excellent so you could do with one of them and then top graft to that as well so you can have a really interesting looking tree in a relatively confined amount of you know uh, confined space so if you've got a fairly small garden you can have you know a huge amount of variety even on the same tree um, but part of my objective here and i'm so glad this works but part of my objective here is to seed all the food forests with things that people don't necessarily think that you can grow here, but especially the area around the car park. So when people pull up and they see, you know, like meddlers and pears and so on hanging off trees that aren't meddlers and pears, that's going to get some conversation going. That's going to get people's attention. You can also get like things like a trifoliate orange that is an actual, you know, edible, theoretically, <laughs> um, orange variety that will grow here and will put on fruit. So they'll see, you know, orange bushes around the place as well. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. Various other things I could go on for this for the next half an hour is a favorite rant of mine. But the idea is that people pull up, they see things they don't expect. They see what's possible when, they, you know, they didn't even know you could do that. It opens people's eyes to new possibilities. And it's not bad for a little bit of sign, what is it? <laughs>